Lesson four, the houses. Learning to interpret house meanings. We know that the signs are fixed, the visions of the heavens. We now, we know that the signs are fixed divisions of the heavens. The houses on the other hand are relative divisions of the heavens, depending on the birthplace and the birth time of the individual. The rotation of the earth causes the signs and the planets to pass through all 12 houses each day. The sign that is on the Eastern horizon at the time of birth in Earth, progress. The ascendant or rising sign, Islam. Each house represents a basic field of activity. The meanings of the houses are modified when they are occupied with planets. It is important to realize from the beginning that having no planet in a house does not mean that there is no activity in that area. No house is ever empty. Each house has a planet that rules the sign on its cusp. Since there are 12 houses and only 10 planets, you cannot possibly have a planet in every house. The houses relate to conditions, while the signs tell about character traits. If you were to compare astrology to acting, you would say the planets are the actors, the signs are the roles they play, and the houses are the settings or situations in which the cast portrays its role. Mercury is always Mercury, but in Gemini, it portrays a different role than in Libra. When Mercury is in the third house, the setting is different from the sixth house. The houses never change position. The ascendant or first house cusp is always the Eastern point of the horizon where the sun appears to rise each morning. Correspondingly, the descendant or the seventh house cup, cusp is always on the Western point of the horizon where the sun sets each evening. The midheaven, commonly referred to as MC, the 10th house cusp, is always at the very top or southern point of the horoscope. It's opposite the IC, the fourth house, the fourth house cusp, is always at the lowest point of the wheel or the northern point. The reference to the 10th house cusp as the MC stems from its name in Latin, medium coli, which means middle of, Its opposite point, the IC, the fourth house cup, is always the lowest point of the wheel of the northern point. The reference to the 10th house cusp as the MC stems from its name in Latin, medium coli, which means middle of the heavens. The reference of the fourth house cusp as the IC stems from the Latin, imam coli, meaning the lowest heavens. As you learned in lesson one, when you filled in the flat wheel, each house is influenced by a sign of the zodiac. Each house has a planetary ruler and each house is classified as angular, succident, succident and cadent. Keep in mind that each house represents a certain field or a certain field of activity in our lives. Let us now turn our attention to a detailed explanation of the houses. First house, natural sign, Aries, key word identity, natural ruler of Mars, the house of life. The cusp 
of the first house is the ascendant or rising sign. It is one of the most important points in the natal chart, and it shows the exact degree and sign that was on the eastern horizon at the moment of birth. The Earth's rotation causes one degree of the zodiac to rise above the eastern horizon approximately every four minutes. For this reason, you can see how important it is to have an accurate birth time. The first house, and in particular, the ascendant, shows your personality, your natural disposition and tendencies, your individuality, and the way you express yourself. It shows how people see you and the way you want others to see you. It is the way you package and market yourself. It represents the physical body, your health, and your early childhood years. It shows your approach to life, your worldly outlook, your appearance, and bearing, and the beginnings of all enterprises. Second house, natural sign, Taurus, sustenance, keyword values, the natural ruler, Venus, a house of substance. The second house shows financial affairs, possessions, except real estate, investments, earning power, and any gain or loss through your efforts. It indicates your inner talents and resources, your need for fulfillment, your emotional feelings, your sense of self-worth, and your sense of values. Since many people believe that liberty is largely a matter of money, this is the house of personal liberty. It is also the house of material debt. Third house, natural sign Gemini, keyword awareness, cadence sign, natural ruler Mercury, a house of side-by-side -side relationships. The third house shows the local government you live in, your brothers and sisters and all forms of communication such as speaking and writing. It also indicates means of transportation, including short trips. It shows the adaptability of your mind to learning and to new ideas, your ability to relate to your environment and your taken for granted skills. It indicates the conscious and objective portion of your mind and your primary schooling. Fourth house, natural sign, cancer, keyword, security, angular, natural ruler, the moon, house of endings. The fourth house shows your home and your parents, the family you came from, your roots, and the home you will establish. This includes your heritage, heredity, and ancestry your psychological roots and your private life. This house shows property such as house or real estate and all that is secluded. It is a house of endings, the closing years of life, the ending of all matters, fame after death and the place of burial. It shows the parent who was the greater influence on you as a child your subjective self and the foundation upon which you build your character. Fifth house, natural sign, Leo. Keyword, creativity. Sustenant, natural ruler, the sun. A house of life. The fifth house shows children, love affairs, romance, pleasures, amusement, holidays, vacations, games, speculations, hobbies, and avocation. It includes your emotional attitude and the love you give. It shows your enterprise as well as sports, originality, and creative outlets. It also indicates dramatic literary or artistic ability. The fifth house shows publication, politics, the fine arts, social affairs, 
pregnancy and education of children. Any groups you belong to which relate to having fun, bowling league, sewing, cir uh, sewing circle, bridge club, etc., are depicted by this house. Sixth house, natural sign Virgo, keyword duty. Caden, natural ruler, Mercury, a house of substance. The sixth house shows your work, your health, and your habits. It indicates employment, employees, tenants, servants, pets, and dependents. It shows service given to others. Routine matters. Your clothes and how you wear them. Hygiene, interests, and food and diet. Sickness and all conditions affecting your health. This house indicates aunts and uncles, self-adjustment, and your unconscious mind. Here, work and health are linked together. Seventh house, Libra, natural sign. I mean, seventh house, natural sign, Libra. Keyword, cooperation. Angular, natural ruler, Venus. A house of face-to-face -face relationships. The seventh house shows both business and marital partnerships, marriage, divorce, contracts, lawsuits, bargains, agreements, any dealings with the public and the public's response. It shows your open enemies, your cooperation with others or your lack of cooperation. It indicates what you most lack in yourself since it is the opposite of the first house, which shows your strongest personality traits. This house shows your attitudes towards marriage, your mate, the kind of quality of the marriage and how many marriages you may have. It also shows your grandparents and many people who act as your agent or in your behalf. Eighth house, natural sign, Scorpio, keyword regeneration, sustenance. Natural ruler, Pluto, a house of endings. The eighth house shows the support you receive from other people, including financial, moral, spiritual, and physical. It indicates legacies, trusts, wills, taxes, insurance matters, as well as secrets, sex, spiritual and physical regeneration, psychological rebirth and degeneration and death. The eighth house shows occult matters, sleep, deep research, investigation, and hidden assets. It also includes the assets of partners and alimony. It is the house of surgery. And along with the sixth house, it shows types of illness. Ninth house, natural sign Sagittarius. Keyword aspiration, Caden, natural ruler, Jupiter, a house of life. And the ninth house shows your highest mind, the superconscious. It indicates religion, law, science, ideals, higher learning, philosophy, psychology, profound mental study, your dreams, and your visions. It shows distant travel, foreigners, foreign dealings, commerce, big business, imports, and exports. The ninth house shows the church as a spiritual factor, the clergy and laws, grandchildren, intuition, ethics, and public opinion in general. It indicates the lessons we learn through living. 10th house, natural sign Capricorn, keyword honor, angular, Natural ruler, Saturn, a house of substance. The 10th house shows your profession, your reputation, and your standing in the community. It indicates your ego, status, fame, promotion, ambition, business, and social activities. Your employer, the government, or any other authority over you. It shows your achievements how the world sees and evaluates you and the influence you exert in your own circle. Here, 
we see the church as an organization and the opposite parent from the one represented by your fourth house. 11th house, natural sign Aquarius, keyword social consciousness. Sustenant, natural ruler Uranus, a house of group relationships. The 11th house shows your capacity for friendship, your attitude towards your friends and acquaintances and all non-emotional relationships. It indicates what you most desire in your life, your goals, the love you receive as well as money obtained from a profession. This house shows stepchildren, foster children, and adopted children, as well as circumstances over which you have little control. Here we see your humanitarian interests, the way you see others, large and small organizations, and clubs you belong to which somehow relate to your career. 12th house, natural sign Pisces, keyword subconscious, Caden, natural ruler, Neptune, a house of endings. The 12th house shows your unknown or hidden strengths and weaknesses. It shows sorrow, suffering, limitations, handicaps, secrets, seclusions, frustration, and behind the scenes action. It indicates places of confinement, jails, hospitals, mental institutions, etc., and restraint, inhibitions, exile, secret enemies, hidden dangers, self undoing, and clandestine affairs. It shows the things we hide from others research, background, subjective sustainment, inner consciousness the subconscious mind, spiritual debts to be paid or karma, but also charity, sympathy and public welfare. It is often called the closet or dustbin of the horoscope because it, is, because it is here, we sweep away or hide problems which are too painful to face or difficulties that we refuse to acknowledge. Houses within houses. Just as the fifth house shows your children, the ninth house, the fifth from the, from the fifth house, shows your children's children, i.e. grandchildren. When counting houses in this manner, be sure to start with the house in question. For example, the fifth house, the fifth house becomes house one as you begin your count. The sixth is house two. The seventh is house three, the eighth is house four, and the ninth becomes house five. The ninth house is five houses from the fifth house. The fourth house as a house of ending shows the conditions at the end of your life. Thus, the eighth house shows how the end of life conditions for your children because it is four houses from the fifth house. The house of your children, count, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. The second house shows your money. It is second from the first house, you. Thus, the eighth house shows your partner's money. Four, it is second from the seventh house, your partner. These are just a few examples of the basic principles involved in turning the wheel to glean additional information from each house. Figure four, will of houses. This chart gives the basic meanings of each house. Let that sink in for a minute. House division by element. As you know, 
from lesson one, each sign is part of a grouping by element. Because each sign has a natural house position, we can group the house in the same way, according to the ruling element of each, fire, the house of life, or personal houses. People with many planets in these houses are inspirational and dynamic. They have great energy and enthusiasm, motivating power and religious convictions. First house, body. Fifth house, soul. Ninth house, spirit and mind. Earth, the houses of substance or possessive houses. People with many planets in these houses are stable and usually are the backbone of their communities and families. Their outlooks and vocational aptitudes are concrete and practical. Second house, possessions, finances. Sixth house, occupation. Tenth house, recognition, environment. Air, the house of relationships or relative houses. People with many planets in these houses are the people who need people. These house, these house placements all describe the individual in relation to other members of the community. Third house, relatives and neighbors, those we do not select, consanguine. Seventh house, those close relationships and partners, those we select for one-to-one -one relationships, conjugal. Eleventh house, social and mental relationships, those we select for shared interests, congenial. Water, the houses of endings or terminal houses, People with many planets in these houses are sensitive and feeling. They are the psychoanalysis and religious figures. These houses describe the innermost soul in the probable way that they will leave this earth. Not when, just how. Fourth house, the end of the physical body. Eighth house, liberation of the soul, death. Twelfth house, philosophic death, philosophic death, the results of the course of life we choose to take. The division of the houses by quality. As you learned in lesson one, there is another system of house division that is also important to keep in mind. The 12 houses can be divided into three groups of four houses each, which correspond to the cardinal, fixed, and mutable qualities. They are called angular, sustenant, and cadent. Angular houses correspond to the cardinal signs. The angular houses are the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth. These angles correspond to east, the ascendant, west, the descendant, north, the imum coli, or IC, and south, the midheaven, or MC. These are the angles or axis of the horoscope. Planets in angular houses have great potential for dynamic action and their influences are intensified. In other words, the angular houses have cardinal, have cardinal qualities. Some books refer to planets in angular houses as accidentally dignified. Sustent houses corresponding to the fixed signs. The sustenant houses are the second, fifth, eighth, and 11th houses. Hmm. They are called sustenant because they follow or succeed the angular houses. They are not as powerful, but just like the fixed signs, they give stability and purpose. They are also the financial houses. 
Caden houses corresponding to the mutable signs. The Caden houses are the third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth. These houses do not have as much opportunity for action as the angular houses, nor do they confer great stability like the fixed houses, but they are adaptable and get along with, with others. They are usually referred to as the mental houses. In figure four, page 39, you will see the basic meanings of each house presented in a wheel form. The meridians. Now that you have learned the basic many meanings of each house, we will introduce you to the meridians. The meridians are another part of the flat wheel and they are an important factor in reading a horoscope. Here's an example. Figure five, the equator or horizon divides the horoscope into southern day and northern night hemispheres. Figure six, the meridian divides the horoscope into eastern rising and western setting hemispheres. The horizontal axis of the horoscope is called the equator or horizon. And the vertical axis of the horoscope is called the meridian. By using each of these divisions, figure five and six, we divide the horoscope into halves. The horizontal axis refers to consciousness. The vertical axis refers to power. Mm. In figure five, the equator divides the chart into day and night sections. Because the horizon divides the chart along the sunrise sunset axis. The day planets are all those that appear in a chart above the horizon. And the night planets are all those that appear below the horizon. Generally speaking, the day or light half of a horoscope represents outgoingness and objectivity while the night section or dark half represents subjectivity and instinct. If you have many planets above the horizon, you will be quite objective and you will want to rise above your position at birth. The public and your career will be important to you. If you have planets below the horizon, especially if these include the sun and the moon, you will be somewhat subjective and content to work behind the scenes. In figure six, the meridian axis divides the chart into an eastern half and western half. These two sections are formed when we divide the chart along the noon to midnight axis. This meridian divides the planets into rising planets and setting planets. See figure six. The rising planets are those in the eastern half of the horoscope, covering the time from midnight to noon. The setting planets are those in the western half of the chart covering the time from noon to midnight. If there are many rising planets in your horoscope, you have a strong free will and are in charge of your own life. This is a sowing incarnation. If there are many setting planets in your chart, you are more flexible and involved with the destinies of others. This is a reaping incarnation. You will also note in figures five and six that we have shown the time of day that each house represents. This becomes important when you want to erect your own charts. You will be able to check the accuracy of your calculations. For example, if you know that someone was born at 2 a.m., you know that the sun will have to fall somewhere in the second or third house. Quiz. Please answer each of the questions below. The correct answer will be found in Appendix A on page 284. One, using symbols, list the three fire signs. Using symbols, list the three earth signs, et cetera. So once again, we'll take this test next week.
a brief comment before we proceed. At the end of lesson four, students invariably want to learn the mathematics of erecting a, erecting a horoscope. We can't blame them for this eagerness. This is a fascinating subject, and of course, everyone wants to see the horoscopes of their friends and relatives. But the knowledge you have learned so far is only the rudimentary or elementary beginning of astrology. It is interesting and enlightening, but like all half knowledge, it can be dangerous. Until you have learned more astrology, you are bound to misunderstand and misjudge charts. And you could do yourself and others an injustice. For these reasons, we do not teach you how to do calculations in this book. We want to turn out astrologers who know how to read a horoscope before they learn to erect one. So that was lesson, lesson four. Pop it back off on Friday with lesson five. How y'all feeling about that? Cypher? Yeah, good. It's, it's interesting how, you know, the meridian is associated with higher consciousness and that kind of correlates with the chakra. Yeah, I've been going back playing the videos back. Like this gonna be, I'm gonna post this. Um, it's gonna be lesson four, but going back, I made a, I made a wheel, a zodiac wheel, and um, I'm just allowing them just to walk me, slow walk me, you know. Yeah, but it's clicking though. I'm loving this. This is the best thing because I always wanted to uh, be competent in that. 